radio communication has transformed our world in just a few decades. For most people, it is hard to imagine life without television and radio, or instant communication. The business world would be crippled without computer links, facsimile machines and car phones. Developments surge ahead, and many of them would depend for their existence on the telecommunications and broadcasting infrastructures. In July 1989, the Home Secretary announced the government's intentions to privatise, on a national basis, the broadcasting transmission networks, owned and operated by the BBC and IBA. This national basis is vital for the economic and reliable operation of the networks. BBC arrangements will remain static until its charter expires in 1996, but the independent sector will move ahead and take advantage of developing markets. The new Broadcasting Act, for the first time, opens the way for broadcast transmission to be run on a truly commercial basis, and, built on the firm foundations of the IBA, a new transmission company is emerging to meet the challenge. Transcom will take on the vital role of delivering ITV and Channel 4 television to the population of Britain at a cost of less than one pound per head per year. This will be the core business, but with transmission sites throughout the UK, the possibilities are endless for associated non-core business. From its headquarters, situated near Winchester, the company will coordinate its operations, maintenance, planning, installation, research and development, and other support services. The quiet setting disguises a bustling business and engineering centre, which pours together the far-flung resources of a truly national company. It's here that much of the groundwork is done in support of transmitting operations all around Britain. Broadcasting services are taken for granted by the general public and what greater complement can there be to such a massive and complex transmission system? It's not for the viewer to think about the perils of mast and aerial maintenance or the discomfort of working in cramped conditions a thousand feet above the ground. It's not the viewer's problem when nature strikes both halves of a transmitting aerial in the depths of winter, but there are men who are trained and prepared to tackle the situation straight away. At times like this, the backup of a national transmission company and all its resources suddenly proves to be of vital significance to millions of people. In the summer months, most viewers are unaware of preventative measures being taken at high-power main transmitters. Although the transmitting aerial panels have a backup facility, the loss of a panel due to a sudden fault can be very awkward, hence the preventative maintenance, as this IBA aerial engineer explains. One of the biggest problems when you lose a panel is that not only are they a thousand foot off the ground, they're tucked into the white cylinder at the top of the mast. Um, we're limited in the number of men that can actually get in there to take a panel out. They have to be fairly slim built. Um, I am at the point of really struggling and always trying to find somebody that's a lot smaller to get in there. So it takes time. Um, we've then got to bring that panel to the ground. We've got to repair the thing and get it back up. Um, but the transmitting aerial panels are only the tip of the iceberg. Down on the ground, the plain-looking buildings concealed another highly specialised operation, the transmitters themselves, which produce high-power radio frequency signals containing the vision and sound information. It's a mysterious world, combining complex electronics, control systems, cooling, power engineering and computers. With stations situated on remote hilltops, a maintenance team may need to drive 30 miles in a blizzard and then apply great skill and concentration to a situation which could affect a fair slice of the population. The many disciplines demand highly trained engineers of special versatility. All the transmitters operate unattended and the whole system is monitored and controlled from only four regional operation centres and overnight from just one. Engineers there can identify problems, switch in backup equipment and keep an overall eye on the performance of the system. With a regional network of maintenance bases, problems are dealt with promptly and efficiently. With many of the original ITV transmitters approaching 20 years of age, the IBA initiated a major program of re-engineering of the installations. 
This work will continue so as to guarantee a high level of service and optimize running cost. The challenge is to replace completely the transmitting installation without the viewer even noticing. This is being achieved by means of transportable temporary transmitters which are moved from site to site as necessary. Thanks to progress in technology, the new equipment takes up only half of the space occupied by the old installation, and that gives enough flexibility to maintain transmissions at virtually full power throughout the work. Usefully, it also makes room for equipment for a fifth channel. Re-engineering has also provided the opportunity of adding NICAM digital stereo sound to UHF television. This is an attractive added feature, bringing sound quality similar to compact disc to television programs. Transcom will continue with both re-engineering and NICAM installations, carrying on the work of the IBA started. With these and any other major projects in the field, the planning, system design, testing and technical support skills at the Crawley Court headquarters contribute a great deal to the smooth running demanded on site. With such a strategically placed network of prime transmission sites, there has always been a demand from non-broadcast users to lease space on masts and make use of other facilities on offer. This demand has mushroomed in recent years with the arrival of many more radio-based telecommunications services. No one wants a proliferation of masts and towers throughout the countryside and site sharing is the obvious environmental and economic answer. More business opportunities present themselves in the world of data communications. The ability of a television network to deliver a data signal to almost every property in the land gives unparalleled point-to-multipoint distribution. With the satellite data market being opened up, data broadcasting is set to enter a new era. Satellite broadcasting itself has already demanded new techniques and skills of the engineers involved. The uplink station for the UK's high power satellite service was designed and commissioned by the IBA's engineering division and the experience gained in this new field has great commercial potential. Similarly, research and development work in broadcasting and related fields is always highly valued. Whether it be specialised equipment for the transmitter networks, representing UK interest on international committees or developing new broadcast systems, in these laboratories can be found many of the answers to the questions of the future. The engineers who work here have the ability to develop solutions to accommodate any future system which may be required for the expansion of UK broadcasting. The specialist skills and depth of knowledge possessed by these broadcasting technologists must be nurtured and preserved with a commitment to long-term funding and continuity for staff and projects. This kind of expertise cannot easily be found elsewhere. Over the years, the IBA's experimental and development labs have contributed greatly to the technical excellence of broadcasting in the UK. But they have also had a significant impact on the broadcasting community worldwide. It's in everyone's interest that this capability is recognised and supported in the future. Given the necessary backing, many aspects of research and development can continue to flourish under a commercial banner, with customers both at home and abroad. Never before have there been so many diverse opportunities and new markets for broadcasters to address. The careful use of that scarce commodity, the radio frequency spectrum, is a subject which has always needed a careful mix of both academic and practical skills. The complexities of the frequency planning for terrestrial television have been thoroughly reworked to find ways of providing a fifth channel for most of the country. Our propagation engineers have been looking at local microwave television systems, MVDS. A field trial in Winchester produced valuable information to assess the possibility of MVDS services across the country. National and international representation is absolutely essential on frequency planning matters and technical standards. Expertise in this field is rare and is in great demand for consultancy work. At the beginning of the 90s, it's clear that telecommunications and broadcasting can no longer be kept apart. Indeed, they are rapidly converging. 
Whatever the future holds for these new partners, Transcom will be there with resources and experience built on 35 years of commercial broadcasting.